Hey guys, Ryan here, and today we're going to be installing a network at my parents' newly remodeled home. So you may have seen my other video about the Ubiquiti access point, and I said in that video that we, I would install it in my parents' house. So today we're going to go ahead and start that project now. But first, we're going to need to wire up all the ports around the house. And to do that, I ordered some keystone jacks wall plates and some certain tools that we'll need to complete the project. One tool that we'll f find handy, but it's optional, is this wire tracer. Basically what this does is, once we wire up the port in the room, we plug this into that port. This has a Cat5 uh, plug-in, as you can see. Once you plug that in, activate it, it'll send a tone through the wire, which we'll, we'll use this to trace at the patch panel end. And that will make things a lot easier to tell which port is what, or which wire is which, and organize it properly in the patch panel. So this definitely needed for a project like this, when you have a bundle of unidentifiable cables <laughs> in your networking closet. Next thing we'll need <coughs> is this punch down tool. I bought this off Monoprex, it's actually really cheap. Basically what this does is, at the jack in each room, the the jacks are like this. So this is a Cat6 gigabit port. And essentially what we do is we strip the wire, uh, strip the outer insulating wire uh, coating or a sheet. And then we use this tool to punch down the actual wire into a jack like this. And then we wire it up into the wall. It's actually really easy and very clean. I would not do it any other way. So let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and start punching down jacks and wiring up the house, and then we'll move on to the wireless access point. All right, so right now we're gonna go ahead and strip the wire from the outer insulation. You can cut the wire in a way so you can pull a string, uh, but to, in order to expose fresh wire that won't be possibly nicked, go ahead and pull the wire down and it will actually cut the sheath open. Spread the individual pairs out, and you can see all their colors. So I'll go ahead and cut off the extra sheath that's hanging off the side. To do that, we'll go ahead and space the wires out away from that area, which that we'll be cutting. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, or it doesn't have to be completely perfect because it's going to be hidden behind the wall anyway. So right now I'm snipping off the extra sheathing, taking careful, making sure that I don't cut any of the wires or nick any of the wires. I'm cutting out the spine of the Cat6 cable. Here it is, the Keystone Jack. As you can see, they're all color-coded. It's actually quite simple, just matching up colors. We're going to go with the B pattern, the lower row. And what's interesting about the uh, the way the jacks are designed is that you'll be able to tell if you wired it incorrectly. There should be no striped wires next to each other. They should all be alternating. So it'll be solid color, striped wire, and another solid color. It's, it'll never be two solid colors next to each other or two striped wires next to each other. So that's a really easy way to, to visually tell that you've wired the jack correctly but you also have to pay attention to the colors on the jack. So right now I'm untwisting the pairs to make the wiring easier. Then it's just a simple matter of lining up the colors to the respective slots. As you can see the B pattern, which is in the bottom, the bottom row, Orange, orange stripe, blue, uh, green, and then green stripe from left to right. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little off screen, but it's literally just sliding the wires down partially so they'll hold. As you can see, it's orange and orange striped wires already placed into their respective colors 
or slots. It doesn't need to go down all the way. That's what the punch down tool, the punch down tool is for. So I'm just lining up the colors right now. It's very simple. So I have one side wired up. As you, as you can see, the white wires or the striped wires are alternating with the solid colors. They're not next to each other, or no colors are next to each other. If that makes any sense. So I'm wiring the other side up. As you can see, it's the blue stripe, blue, brown stripe, brown wire pairs. Now it's just a matter of seeing it down. So the punch down tool actually cuts the wire too, or at least tries to. So as you can see, it kind of snaps into place and it should cut the excess wire off the end. You might need to do it a few times or just twist off the rest, but make sure you pull it downwards. Don't pull it up, otherwise you'll possibly unseat the wire. Yeah, so as you can see the ends of the wire popping off on my second go through. It's probably just because I'm not pressing it down hard enough. So I'm working on the other end now. And I twist off the loose ends. They're pretty much almost cut, but I just kind of wiggle them off anyway. And there you have it. It's all wired up, clean, and pretty cool. So there are a few covers in the bag that came with the jack. So make sure you snap on the, the covers. That'll keep dust and grime and stuff from coming out. It also keeps the wires in place. There's also another cover, but I just forgot it. I ended up putting it on later. Snap it into the wall plate, and there you have it. Now we'll go ahead and demonstrate the wire tracer. With the port wired up, we're going to go ahead and plug the wire tracer in using the included Cat5 cable. Make sure it's seated in there properly. Then we press the on button. As you can see, it's blinking and activated. Now we'll go ahead to the wiring closet and show you how it works. Here we are at the wiring closet. As you can see, we have a bundle of wires coming from the wall. No labels, indiscriminate to really where these wires are going. But I already traced this wire. This, actually, this wire is the one we just wired up. As you can see, I have the wand detector here. And if we go ahead and touch the wand, you can hear it. Now depending where you're putting it on the, the wire, it's going to be stronger or lesser because it's only sending a, a tone through one of the wires on this braid. So as long as you can isolate it, you should be good. So now we know that this is the wire in the living room that we just wired up. So that's how you use a wire tracer.